الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من من نفس واحده وقال منهم ما زوجها وبص منه وعلي جعل وخسيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلي لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يؤسر ومن ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يؤت الله ورسوله فقد فاز فقد فاز فوزا عظيما my dear brothers and sisters in islam today i want to remind you about uh, remind you and remind myself about the life here after death everyone in this mortal world is destined to this state a better truth a better truth that no one can deny in surah al-imran ayah 186 says every soul will test it and you will be paid in the full and you will be paid in full on the day of resurrection whoever is kept away from fire and middle of the garden will be trapped the present world is just a wall of just a wall of pleasure we are here for a mission So this this verse reflect on an open a secret that mankind through this, through death passes onto another phase of life that is about a transition from this physical life to another life a day is bound to come when everything in this world when everything in this world will be no more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will resurrect mankind and missions In Surah Al-Mutafifin, Ayah, Ayah 46, it says, Does these people not realize that they will be raised up on a mighty day, a day when everyone will be stand before the Lord of the world? This will be a different place where everyone will be ripped off, where everyone will reap the harvest of what you have sowed in this world. This is the place and the time of action. The world we are living right now, this dunya is the place and the time of action. And as our bo- and as we borrow time comes to an end. We will find ourselves in this world of profit or loss, of honor or humiliation, of reward or punishment. And remember this life is limited. But the life in the hereafter is eternal and it doesn't have a limit. Mankind has been given full freedom to spend his life as an investment to earn the benefit of the hereafter, or devote it to enjoy, uh, or devote it into the practice of what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made us to do, and what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has practiced in this world. Who in his who in the right mind will choose to spoil an external world with misdeed in a temporal world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-mulk ayah 1 exact he is who holds all control in his hand who has power over everything who create death and life to test you people and reveal which of you does best he is mighty and forgiving who created the seven heaven and the one above others and each of the seven heavens are above each other how sad that knowing this world a place of actions man totally disregard here after he willingly become a victim of temptation and doesn't pay attention to the message between the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers after messengers Their time and again comes to remind us and to warn us that this to warn us that 
this time will will be over and there will be a time when everybody they will all stand in front of our Lord they wanted to wake us up before it was too late not caring for the hereafter and showing no concern even after seeing the people are passing away day and night among us is the last and deplorable stage of forgetfulness and carelessness our beloved prophet peace be upon him once said that someone's death is enough someone's death is enough advice for all of us in yet another tradition he said think more often of that which nullify all pleasures it was prophet peace be upon him usually practice that in the last night of in the last part of the night he used to call his house old people to wake up in this world get up remember allah remember allah the time of the big jolt that will topple this wall upside down is approaching fast and which is that this is in uh, it is fact that this life is the only opportunity we have to prepare ourselves for the grave and the hereafter. If we fail to act so, so that the grave will be dark and narrow for, for all of us, for anybody who, who, who doesn't practice Islam in this world. The Prophet peace be upon him says that grave is either a guardian from among the guardians of paradise or it is a peg for, uh, from among the peg of health. In yet another tradition, Prophet Bisbe upon him said that, grave call out daily, that is, that it is a place of strength, strength and loneliness. It is an art and closet, and a hole full with warmth. He, Prophet Bisbe upon him, added that, when a mu'min, is better. The grave greet and welcome him with love and extend itself as far as the eye could see. But when a disobedient of Allah is buried, the grave treat him as an enemy. It contracts his body to an extent that the ribs change place as the compress by, <laughs> by acknowledging the present. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, we live in this world just for a short period of time. We all know that we are here for a mission. And that mission, we all know that it will come to an end. And at the, at the end of our missions, we, will, we have to go with our results, either with your good deeds or with your bad deeds. So it depends on what you have done. So this is an opportunity that Allah has given us to wake up from the slums of forgiveness, from the slums of forgetfulness. No one knows when the angel of death may come and we may lose the only chance to act. Those who are careless, forgetfulness, forgetful and sinners will experience in the hereafter a moment of extreme pain, loose and sane. But repentance will, will, be, will be of no avail as the opportunity to act. Reform and correct will be lost. The, the Holy Quran described this. The Holy Quran described their condition in Surah al Sajdad, Ayah 12, in this verse. If you could see the wrongdoers hang their heads before their Lord, oh, our Lord, now that we have seen and heard, send us back, and we shall do good. We are convinced. Since this couldn't be the time for forgiveness, hence repentance and the sense of guilty will be of no avail, and the sinner will be whole in point blank time that is mentioned in Ayah 14 of the same Shura. 
So since you ignore the meeting of the day of resolutions, that is the day of judgment, now we shall ignore you, taste the lasting suffering for all that you have done in the dunya. This war is for God, Mu'min, and Kafir. The only difference between these two is that the Mu'min lead his life in this world in abundance with the command of Allah and the will of Allah, with the command and will of Allah. And the Kafir just follow the world materials, materials in this world and forget about Allah without any moral belief being there. The only thing one, need, one needs for the salvation of the hereafter is to act according to Allah and His Prophet's command. Be it in food, in drink, in business, in interrelationship, in social interactions, in everything that the Islam has commanded us to do. This is essence of Islam's teaching and tolerance one's life according to those teachings and Allah and his messengers place on. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala infinite mercy that he made us Muslim and busted upon us faith in him and his messenger and his mes and his and his message and his messengers without our doing anything to deserve his favor and blessings. So let's ask ourselves, having this, all these flavors that Allah gave it to us, all these, all these things that he, among all the million, billions of people in, in the world, we are among the ones that he choose to be Muslims. <coughs> so what are we going to do now? The only thing he commanded us to do is just to follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <coughs> but let's ask ourselves, our daily, daily life, how much do we worship Allah? How much did we, did we disobey Allah? So in this case, judgment can start from yourself. It is very necessary for us to clean our heart and focus on what is most important. Please take some time off from your daily engagement and preoccupation to put upon this infinite blessing. Deliberate on how much time you have spent in his remembrance and in thanking him for all these favors. Think how much time have you spent in obedience and how much time have you spent in disobedience, Allah. A time will come when you will find standing before him and be held accountable for all that we have done in this sort of life. Our hand, our feet, our eyes, our ears will stand as witnesses. They will stand as, as witnesses against us for using them against his command. Pay attention. Be vigilant and remain conscious and keep reminding ourselves that each moment in this life, inshallah, we should, uh, if we start uh, accounting ourselves first, and then we look at the, uh, into, uh, into our deeds, what we have done, and what we are doing, and what we want to do in the future. Let's consider Allah and know that everything has an end. <coughs> this world is just a short period of time. So whatever we are do, let's, let's make sure that we do it according to what the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded us to do. And we know that everybody, all, we are not perfect. Sometimes we make mistakes. Everybody make a mistake. But if you make a mistake, ask for forgiveness after you have made a mistake. Allah is merciful. No matter how sinful you are, if you are the best, most sin, sinful person in this world, still don't give up. Just ask for forgiveness. He may even turn all those sins to good deeds. And the angel of death, it was written that he asked the angel of death when he was when he is approaching 
the movie. Uh, like normally, the angel of death, they don't ask people. But they ask him when he is approaching the movie. He asks them, So I take you out of this world or leave you here? So the movie will reply, Please make haste and take me away from this troublesome and worrisome place. But let's ask ourselves right now, if the angel of death stand at the door, how many of us are going to be running away? Because we are not ready for the life we are here after. So let's all, all prepare and remind you that anytime, even you walk out of this door, you can die at any time. So the best thing for us to do is to make taqwa and ask forgiveness. In whatever we do, you're walking away, stop for us, stop for us. Whatever you are doing, stop for us, stop for us. And we came, we all came from a long way. We are here. But <coughs> nobody, you, like normally when we are at home, you look at your parents, you go pray, you go pray. You know, they tell you to do things, you do it. But here you are here alone. It's a good taste for you. This is why this place, it will taste whether you will do things on your own, whether you will pray, whether you will follow the commands of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, but Alhamdulillah, some of us, you know, we are doing it, and some of us, also, we need to make more efforts. People like us, we need to make more efforts to make it, to be the good Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to think about the hereafter and have concern for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to realize the important object of life and countless blessings we have been fostered with and utilize the time for that and with uh, wisely and the way to please Allah and his messengers. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad Amma salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim Mubarak ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad Amma barak ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim Bil alamina inna hamidu majid Rabbana zalamna amusana wa illam taqfirna Utrahamna wa nakuna na minal khashirun Rabbi khabli min azwajana wa zuriyatina kura da'ayu Wajalna alil mutaqina imama Kul bawi hazar wa astaghfirullah